Hi, this is Steve Zara. Um, again, I'm going to show you a quick lesson on how to make an S-spring. There's a great little spring that you can bring a tooth, mesial, distal, and push it out a little, just a little bit. These are basically for kids who didn't wear the retainer or just the doctor wants to do a little finishing touch. Um, first, the, you're going to see that I'm scoring the model. That kind of gives a pre-activation to the spring when everything, when the spring's actually in the retainer. So when I bend the wire, excuse me, when I bend the wire, the, the spring's going to sit right in there. That way it's already putting about a half a millimeter pressure right on the tooth, right from the get-go. Otherwise, the doctor has to activate the spring, and typically it's rather passive. I use a uh, bird beak plier, a special bird beak plier that allows me to make really, really tight, fine bends. I would say this is more of an intermediate to an advanced technician um, skill level. It's not for the beginner. They do sell S springs that you can buy that are prefabricated. Prefabricated, I'm sorry. Um, but that's not necessarily. Um, makes it easier because some of the prefabricator ones come in the wrong size. So the custom bend it and to get the measurements correctly is ideal. I like to make the S-spring nice and closed. The loops are nice and closed just so it allows the doctor to be able to pull the spring out and allow more movement for the tooth. The key to the making these um, types of springs is to make sure it's about a half a millimeter off the tissue to allow the acrylic to flow underneath. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems where it's going to be poking into the gingiva. Once the spring is where it should be, you're going to put little bends in it just to give it some more so the acrylic can bond to it a little bit better. That's what I'm doing. I'm just making a little less bends in it. Once this part's done, you're going to add some separator to the model. And where you're going to put the spring, you're going to just kind of lightly put some separator because you're going to wax it out and the separator is going to make the wax peel off it. So you don't want to bury it in separator, you just want to put a nice little coating on it. Here I just found a little bleb in the model that I didn't like. So I might as well pick it off, make sure that uh, it's not going to interfere with the acrylic at all when I'm going to seat the final appliance. One of the main keys to making this appliance really nice is when you add the wax, you want to put a nice, real thin little layer. Make sure the you wax in the spring where it's um, not too thick because any time any positive wax that's on the top of the spring is going to be a negative for the acrylic because it's going to make it too thick. The thicker your wax is, the thicker your acrylic is going to be. And what ends up happening is the lower model is going to, or I should say the lower teeth are going to be in a biting into the spring. By making a nice little thin layer, you can add the, build up the acrylic and have a nice little thin layer. This also prevents um, the spring from being bent by the patient. You'll see in the final product that you can see that the spring has a covering over it, like a little sheath of acrylic. And that'll also, it's going to prevent the child from playing it with it, with typically with their tongue or their finger and bending it. Um, if you're interested in any more videos, contact me, um, send an email, what you'd like to see, 
and um, subscribe, like, and share.